reverence and honor God and follow after the law of the Lord, that there would never be a time when there would not be a descendant of David on the throne of King David. But unfortunately, the three kings that are addressed in this portion of Scripture did not reverence and honor God. As a matter of fact, Judah had 20 kings. And of those 20 kings, only two kings honored God and did no evil in the sight of the Lord. 18 of the kings turned aside to false gods and to serving the desires of their own flesh. And God was patient and he was long-suffering and he cried out to Judah. He cried out to the kings and the leadership. He cried out to the priests. He cried out to them all, all over the course of many, many, many years. And because they wanted what they wanted, more than they wanted the will of God in their lives. 18 kings went their own way. And God had finally had enough. He knew that they would not turn. The final king was a king that was a king in name only. Because after two invasions of the Babylonians into Judah, the second of which we find Daniel and Ezekiel taken into Babylon, both recognizing that this was the judgment of God that did not fight against Nebuchadnezzar because whatever the will of God was, even if it was bondage, they would submit. They would yield under the hand of judgment before God. And God used those two men mightily, Daniel becoming the second in command of all Babylon. And then a chief advisor under the Persians who defeated Babylon under King Cyrus. Ezekiel being the man who sent letters back into Judah with lying prophets when people said that it wasn't the judgment of God, that everything would be all right, no punishment was coming. They were unwilling to speak the truth about the sin of the people to give the people what they wanted to hear. He sent letters back telling them the truth, telling them surrender, telling them don't, don't try to stand against God. Accept his judgment. Humble your heart before him. Stretch out a hand because God's merciful. And they refused. The only two just kings were the king Josiah and the king Hezekiah. The funny thing is, and the thing that we should take note of at this point, we've heard in Jeremiah so far that there have been numerous warnings in good times and in bad by the prophet Jeremiah. As a matter of fact, before the temple was renovated, he spoke to the people in the streets, anybody who would listen, and told them of a coming judgment. And then when the temple was, was rebuilt, everything was wonderful, all the traditions, all the religiousness. Not relationship with God, but religiousness was restored. God spoke to him and he stood in the doorway, the gateway of the temple and said, you're going in and you're performing rituals and this is not relationship with God. He spoke to them and said, you've got to come with a heart that's repentant. You've got to come with a heart that's yielded. You've got to come to the place where you say, God, it's not about what I want. It's about what you want. Speak to me. And as much as it's in my hand, I'll make it so. And nobody would listen. They were going to the temple to hear priests that had no contact with God whatsoever. They were telling the people lies because they had itching ears. 
that wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. And because it was politically correct. And Jeremiah wept. And he continued to tell the people, to tell the leadership, that all those things. Now, if you'll recall, prior to the ministry of Jeremiah, under the kings before, horrible things, horrible things were happening in Judah. Burning babies alive on red hot metal altars and beating drums, beating drums to drown out the signs, the sounds of infants sizzling on iron hands. I know it sounds terrible. It is. And they were doing it for the worship of Molech, the Baals, so that they might have prosperity, so that they might have increased wealth, so that their crops wouldn't fail. In other words, their natural affection for their own children turned off for their own desire that they might live their life unencumbered. Sound familiar? It's all too familiar. God speaks to Jeremiah and he says, you go take the leadership, the king. You take those who lead Judah and you take them across the valley of the Kidron down to the valley of Hinnom. You take them there where they burn the garbage dump and it burns, and it burns, and it burns. The fire never goes out. Down to the place where the metal altars are, and you tell them, it's because you did this that I'm going to judge you. God makes the decision that they are unable to serve him with a whole heart. And he knows that they will not repent. Now, he speaks specifically to these three kings. And as he speaks to them, we find that there are some tremendous parallels. The people are angry because under the king Josiah, he has ordered the complete stopping of worshiping Molech and the Baals. No more burning babies down in the Valley of Hinnom. No more worshiping false gods. And the people were commanded to worship at the temple of God. But when they did it, they did it because they were ordered to do it and they were angry because the economy was beginning to slide. Things were beginning to go bad because their heart wasn't in it. And the judgment of God had begun to fall on Judah. But the people could not accept the idea. The reason that things were going bad in their national life was because they had turned their back on Jehovah God. They believed the reason was that they were no longer allowed to worship Molech and Baal. And they thought all their troubles were because they were no longer able to worship their false gods. Do you ever listen to the news on CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, MSNBC? You hear people that almost with marked vitriol say, well, you know, the trouble in this country today are those conservative Christians. The difficulty is they're trying to impress their version of morality on the society. And they have worked actively to remove prayer from school, Bible reading from school. They've worked to make it virtually a crime to witness to somebody in the workplace. They've done everything they can do over the years 
to move toward trying to remove the influence of Almighty God from the society. In other words, just like Judah, they were saying the problem here is that we don't want to worship Jehovah God. We want our own false God. And you know who that is? We wish to worship ourselves and what we want. And the people were angry. And after Josiah died, the successive kings removed and did away with every reform that the young king and Jeremiah had made in the country. And now God speaks to those kings that destroyed everything Josiah tried to do. Now I know the setup for this portion of scripture is a little long, but without that understanding, it just doesn't have the impact that it really needs to have. So, Jeremiah 22, verse one. Actually, let's read through the whole chapter. Thus says the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah and there speak this word. In other words, go get in the king's face. And say, hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah. You who sit on the throne of David. You and your servants and your people who enter these gates. Thus says the Lord, execute judgment and righteousness. And deliver the plundered out of the hand of the oppressor. And do no wrong and do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, or the widow, nor shed innocent blood in this place. For if you indeed do this thing, then shall enter the gates of, the house, of this house, riding on horses and in chariots, accompanied by servants and people, kings who sit on the throne of David. But if you will not hear these words, I swear by myself, says the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. For thus says the, the Lord to the house of the king of Judah, you are Gilead to me, the head of Lebanon, yet surely I will make you a wilderness, cities which are not inhabited. I will prepare destroyers against you, every one with his weapons, and they shall cut down your choice cedars and cast them into the fire. And many nations will pass by this city, and everyone will say to his neighbor, why has the Lord done so to this great city? Then they will answer, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God and worshiped other gods and served them. Weep not for the dead, nor bemoan him. Weep bitterly for him who goes away, for he shall return no more, nor see his native country. For thus says the Lord concerning Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, who reigned instead of Josiah his father, who went from this place, he shall not return here anymore, but he shall die in the place where they have led him captive and shall see this land no more. Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by injustice, who uses his neighbor's services without wages and gives him nothing for his work, who says, I will build myself a wide house with spacious chambers and cut out windows for it, paneling it with cedar and painting it with vermilion. Shall you reign because you enclose yourself in cedar? Do you do not your fathers eat and drink and do justice and righteousness? Then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and the needy. Then it was well 
Was not this knowing me, says the Lord? Yet your eyes and your heart are for nothing but your covetousness, for shedding innocent blood and practicing oppression and violence. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, my brother, or alas, my sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Alas, master, or alas, his glory. He shall be buried with the burial of a donkey. It's almost hard not to comment at this point. Dragged and cast out beyond the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry out, and lift up your voice in Bashan, city of Abram, for all your loaves, lovers are destroyed. I spoke to you in, the pros in prosperity, in your prosperity, but you said, I will not hear. This has been your manner from your youth, that you did not obey my voice. The wind shall eat up all your rules and your lovers, all your rulers and your lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then you will be ashamed and humiliated for all your wickedness. O inhabitants of Lebanon, making your nests in the cedars, how gracious will you be when pangs come upon you like the pain of the woman in labor. As I live, says the Lord, though, Co though Coniah, and you say, wait a minute, who's Coniah? Oh, stay tuned. Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the, were the signet, though he were the signet, on my right hand, I would pluck it off of you. Get rid of it. And I will give you into the hand of those who seek your life and into the hand of those whose face you fear. The hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and the hand of the Chaldeans. So I will cast you out of your mother who bore you into another country where you were not born, and there you shall die. But to the land to which they desire to return, 